We are going to talk about a movie. This is gonna be a disaster. It was one of the best movies of the year. It's gonna um, go so well. <laughs> <laughs> Probably one of the last movies I would ever want to see in a theater. Hello and welcome to the next episode of 10 Years On. I am your host, Jacob London, and today we are looking at January 15th, 2010. I am joined by my wonderful panel, Taylor Robinson. How are you? I'm great. This is this is going to be another interesting... Uh, this was another interesting week for film. It we'll was. just We'll just say that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm also joined by Nick. How are you going? I'm very well, thank you. Happy to be here. As uh, Red Letter Media, the YouTube channel, coined the phrase, fuck you, January. And that's how I felt <laughs> this week. <so. laughs> and Peter, how are you going? Yeah, good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> we'll see With how we, such we see conviction. Yeah, we'll see how we go. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, let's start with the wide release films that were open this week. We had The Book of Eli in 3,111 theatres. The Spy <laughs> Next Door in 2,924 theatres. And The Lovely Bones had an expansion into a wide release of 2,560 theatres. So it was originally just playing in limited release. It is, of course, a 2009 film, so we're not covering it today. Um, also in limited release, we had Fish Tank, Chance, uh, Chance Per Dance, and 44 chest, Inch Chest. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. have any of you ever heard of those three limited release films? Fish I've tank. heard of 44 Inch Chest. I was going to say, I think I have That's, two. Yeah. Fish Tank's ringing a bell as like probably like an indie film that we got at the video store. Like I'm seeing the cover for some reason, yeah. yeah. Is it a Fish Tank? <laughs> no, 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 no. You'd, you'd think so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think there was fish in any of that movie. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> Metaphorical. Um, the <laughs> other film we will be talking about today is, of course, the Australian film Brand New Day that opened in... Uh, Australian cinemas on this date in 2010 so we will of course be talking about that but before we do any of that let's begin with our first film The Spy Next Door <laughs> The Spy Next Door stars Jackie Chan as Bob Ho a Chinese intelligence agent on loan to the CIA who retires because he's fallen for his single mother neighbour Jillian when Jillian has to go out of town for a few days, Bob agrees to look after her three children as a way to impress her. Little does he realise how difficult looking after three children really is. Peter, I think you look like you're about to cry. <laughs> I don't know why hearing the plot description is so funny. Oh, my apologies, Jackie Chan. Um, it's just, it, it makes it so much... Worse, <laughs> like read out as a very serious description. Um, oh, this, this movie just like I'm. I'm glad we're in agreement. Like, there's none of us that are just like, oh, it's not that bad. Like, no. <laughs> like from the get go, it was just like who like. I know that there's this thing in Hollywood where you cast sort of beautiful women against everyday men. <laughs> You know, like you got your Adam Sandler's and yeah. Kevin James who gets... Yeah, gets <laughs> but this, I was like, something right. Amber Valletta. <laughs> like, <laughs> genuinely and, like, purposely in love with Jackie Chan. The word is perfect. Like, she chose to be yeah, in yeah. love with Jackie Chan. Like, I, I, just, I just want to say, I just need to say that the thing that really set the tone for this movie to me where I went, oh, we're in for a fucking, I don't even know what we're in for, was when I realized that his co-lead spies in this movie was Billy Ray Cyrus <laughs> and George, George Lopez. Lopez. When Billy Ray Cyrus walked in and went, Yo, like, partner, like, what's up? I'm part of this spy organization. And they, three of them started trying to make spy plans together. I went, you know what? They knew what they had with this movie. I'll give them that. Because that's who they chose to cast. Yeah. I, I really, I just, that was my favorite bit. Because you were basically in the kitchen making food while we put this movie on. Because not giving 100% of our attention to this movie. And... Just as soon as Billy Ray came on, you just turned and stopped and went, 
he's in this movie <laughs> this is my instant new favorite film <laughs> i was like i want to see billy ray cyrus trying to seriously deliver spy dialogue intelligence-based dialogue and make me believe that he works in this spy agency with jackie chan <laughs> and who, who they're they're so high up that that the well, government lent jackie chan to them <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You, know, like, you have to remember, like, he is a he's on loan. Yes, yeah, that's right. yes. On the Chinese. Uh, Intelli- no, it's Chinese <laughs> intelligence. Intelligence. That's it. That was the word I was looking for, this and I couldn't find it, which makes perfect sense. Makes for a movie. For this movie, the lack of uh, intelligence. It's almost ironic that it's yeah. Chinese intelligence. But Billy Ray Cyrus in this movie has one job, and it's to go. Now what are we gonna do next? <laughs> That's literally all he does. Like, like we get we get the the setup of what the bad guys are gonna do. We get George Lopez going. Oh, we're gonna get our best renegade Jackie Chan in this, and then Billy Ray Cyrus <laughs> just literally just he like does this. He's like, and now what are we gonna <laughs> do? And I was like, there is no reason for him to be even a character. It doesn't have to even be Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> Don't need his character at all. It's just great. And it is Billy Ray Cyrus. Oh, God. But he definitely brought the movie to a level of meme for me that it, oh. I was oh. laughing at what I was seeing, not with it, that's for sure. And George Lopez is sort of in that same boat. They're, they're com- he's a comedian, so he's naturally funny. He's naturally charming and charismatic. He always has been. <laughs> Just I, as a person, oh, I mean, as oh, George. All right. <laughs> Naturally funny. I just mean, I, George Lopez is a person. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Anyone who's listening to the audio version, the look on Peter's face right now was just, um, I think he was going to punch Nick in the face. Uh, you know. Look, I just, I just can't get over. I just can't get over the fact that Billy Ray and George were just like not even trying to pretend like they were trying to seriously deliver their no. lines. Like there was no like it was like here's your lines. You have two seconds to learn them. <laughs> Go. We, like, we've actually written the script like, this morning. We wrote it right <laughs> now like, as you, know. you walked in the door. You have one second to look at your line, and the camera's on, and we have one take. You get one take to do this. I mean, so. We don't even know how we got funding for this, so let's just go. Chinese intelligence. That's uh, I know, like... I love that we're all talking about Billy Ray Cyrus. Like he's like this massive part of the movie. Like he's not. No, at all. he's in he's like, like four yeah. scenes, and I just remember you going, "Oh, please tell me he goes in the field." And then the next scene, he's in, in the, the field. field. It's just like, oh my god. Because I thought it was just amazing. gonna be that one scene, like at the very beginning of the movie, and then we'd never see Billy Ray again. No, like classic Cyrus cameo. Yeah. <laughs> like, best, and I was just like, oh actor. wow, this really was 2010. Like Billy Ray and George Lopez are in this movie. Like, oh, wow. yeah, that's, that's very much a product uh, of this time because you're like George Lopez. You're just not around no. anymore. And like even no. Jackie Chan's kind of not as not definitely as, not as prominent as he was in those early 2000s. And yeah. the other thing that I really just irked me about this movie was the eldest daughter oh my such god such a little bitch oh yeah. my god like i know god. that in these movies the the kids <laughs> always like it's always, she's always got an attitude problem because she's not her biological daughter it, yeah. like she calls her by her first name which immediately i was just like <laughs> i don't like <laughs> i'm just waiting but as soon as that happens is uh, oh jillian and then by the end of the movie you it's know like, it's coming like, like uh, oh Oh, mom. Yeah. It's like, oh, and my then everything God. is forgiven. Like, Amber Blood is like, <laughs> yeah. you put my children's life in danger. They, they, the kids <laughs> literally go into like action sequences where yeah. they could die. <laughs> like, because this is a PG movie, like, n- there's never any threat. No. But then it's like, okay, no, there, you're angry. Jackie Chan took your kids into dangerous situations. Well, what's the logical next you step? Know, break up, get married. <laughs> I knew it. I called yeah, it. Yeah, I married. called it at the beginning of yeah. the movie. I went, if this movie does not end with a wedding, <laughs> they've done this wrong. Or at least like a very, like that scene with like, they look at each other and like the happy music players and it's like. The, the camera <laughs> cranes <laughs> up and, and it's the whole group of people yeah. and the kids run in and hug. No, we get a full wedding at the end yeah. of this movie. I think we need to talk about yours and my favorite thing about this movie which was the accents of the villains oh <laughs> my god that, whoa, that woman yeah. what oh. was she going for you know what it reminded me of it reminded me of the <laughs> the bad 
guy, the bad chick in Dodgeball, the really yeah. ugly guy. <laughs> but at least in Dodgeball, yeah, it was, that works. Yeah, because like Dodgeball is not going, like it knows it's, it's going for something stupid. This yeah. was like, oh, you, like this was a choice. These are, uh, the, like, like it, I feel like in the script, it was like villains are Eastern European. Yeah. <laughs> You know, which is, I mean, maybe in 2010, that and was like, the I don't hottest want to then do villain to have. A version of the accent, because that would be kind of, you know, <laughs> could be bad. We don't want to, yeah. Um, but no, it's, she's, it, oh, she's just, bad. it's so stereotypical, like, walks around in black leather and the high <laughs> and then stands in, like, the, the acid... And burn the, the shoes the off shoes. And she's like That was the weirdest scene She doesn't and then, move And then But then her feet Bare feet stay in the acid And nothing happens Because the it burns shoes, rubber if The burns shoes rubber, must it's gonna have been rubber skin. She's wearing rubber shoes That's why they melted and Her then Jimmy like, shoes have yeah. melted oh. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and there's there's that one classic scene with the bad guy where it's like these are the only clothes you could get me, and he's wearing like he's doing do it accents, five times. <laughs> they do oh, it like <laughs> five times the same joke. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like it, it was the most repetitive, and it's like it's like that scene in Seventeen again, but it's funny in Seventeen again because Zach Efron's playing Matthew Perry as younger, whereas this is like. These are not the only clothes you could have bought. This wasn't a stylistic <laughs> choice that you're like, mm, he will look good in this. Yeah, it it's, was like it's, it's a joke that's not is, funny. Yeah, is Kevin Federline available? Yeah. We'll get his coat. <laughs> All right, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up my favorite scene oh, from this yep. entire movie yep. when the main villain gets angry, throws his phone down, and shoots it with a gun. Yeah. And then his uh, assistant calls him on another phone. Is like, yeah, this happens all the time. This happens all the time. Like, how much money do you guys have? <laughs> I, as like, soon as that scene happened, you just turned to me and said, "Oh my god, that's my new favorite scene." It just, I just like need I need it. a gif of this immediately. It's just so excess, and I guess that's what the joke was supposed to be. But at the same time, I didn't laugh because there's no setup for him to be this overly angry no. he's not really an angry angry bad guy but then there's just this one thing that ticks him off and he's like i'm gonna shoot my phone now so and then like she just automatically calls him on another phone because yeah. she's like yeah almost yeah. immediately hey it was yeah. like very yeah yeah. yeah yeah and like what you just got the same number on my, on my <laughs> um i actually also about five seconds after that scene is the whole he's behind you well no he's not and then she does the Full dramatic turn, like what? <laughs> the camera, it's oh, it's so perfect. But it is just perfect. This uh, that comes into one of my points here because I'm like, what is the appeal of this movie? It's too predictable. Like mm-hmm. it's it's got the perfect three act structure. Mm-hmm. Like if, if you were teaching this in a screenwriting class, you'd be like, this is how you write <laughs> the safest movie possible. <laughs> It's overly style. It's too stylized yeah. for its own good. That scene where Jackie Chan runs up the house to get the cat on the roof, I was like, "That's." It's all wires when you when you're coming from a filmmaking perspective. But I'm like, "Oh no, that literally looks like he's taken one step, and these wires have just pulled him up <laughs> to the roof to find the cat." And the other one where the bad guy gets uh, shot through the door, the kid has the yeah. oh, whatever yeah, web, but... and it hits. I can't remember what this is something like. I don't know, it was a potato gun or some shit. But it shoots the bad guy and the guy gets launched down the hallway and <laughs> through the door. And the door breaks like it is like polystyrene. Like it just, <laughs> and I'm like, it is too... The violence was too stylized to be entertaining. We were talking before the podcast that this has come out the same week as My Spy in Australia. And the one thing I'll give the opening scene of My Spy is I was like, they at least went for action violence in an action film for that opening scene at least whereas this i was like this is all straight up comedic violence and it doesn't make sense to me yeah and like even the the kind of somewhat interesting story they try to go with with him bonding with the kids Mm. is weird because the son is so awkwardly written yeah like I don't understand who this kid is actually supposed to be. Like he's supposed yeah. to be a genius, I feel but like, like he grew up to be Michael Sarah and Youth involved. Hundred <laughs> percent, especially with the style tips that Jackie yeah. Chan was trying to give him with the popped collar oh. and the freaking like. Like yeah, let's take fashion advice from Jackie <laughs> Chan. So yeah, I don't like none of the kids were interesting. Like they were all really yeah. shitty. 
uh, they were all terrible at acting as yeah. well. Like they just, it seemed like they just pulled kids off the street and went, "This will do." Yeah. Actually, we like, funny. We looked up. Have these kids done anything? And like one of one the, of them has done the older, the older one, one has done stuff. Yeah, the, the other, other two, two have nothing. It's like they don't even have a Wikipedia link. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has one of those. Oh God. Oh, so oh, yeah, that was. Uh, so I, I cannot recommend that you watch no, this movie. No. In good yeah. conscience, I can't uh, do it. Save save your streaming minutes. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> Do it. Save your life watch. minutes as well, <laughs> to be fair. If, just want, like, if there's a Jackie Chan movie that you really want, just watch the Rush Hour trilogy. Yeah. And, if you want yeah. a movie like this, watch The Pacifier. It's the <laughs> yes. same movie, but mildly better. Yeah. Uh, or the one we're talking about next week. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh, all right, let's move on to <laughs> our next film. Uh, let's, yeah, The Book of Eli. Uh, Denzel Washington stars in this post-apocalyptic action drama as Eli, a man traveling to the West Coast to deliver the last known copy of the King James Bible. Uh, yeah, this was a movie. <laughs> <laughs> it was a thing they did. Yeah. There was the potential for a good movie in this movie, and they just made all of the wrong choices. Well, and it was actually kind of frustrating mm. because I think the, the story at the very, very base level, could have been very interesting to explore yep. in a movie. And they just chose the most boring way to do it. To tell it, yeah. Um, I was really bored through most of it. There were some scenes where I thought um, that the way it was shot was really cool, or I thought that some of the choreography was done really well, um, or just, just moments where... I was like, oh, okay, I see what they were trying to do here, and that could have been interesting if the rest had been executed well. But the over, there are parts that should work that need to work for you to buy into the overarching story they're trying to tell, and by the end, I just don't buy it. Yeah. Like, I just... Yeah. So last week, we were talking about Daybreakers, a film that mm. knows its world and it knows the story it wants to do, and it... And it works well within the world it wants to tell and this is i think the other side of yeah, that where I think so too. it knows its world it just doesn't tell the story it should have told in that world yeah. um one, uh, so some things i really liked about this i liked the idea that it had of faith is corruptible and mm. you, and I, I liked that idea that, ha, oh, no, some people ha, use religion to corrupt and some people use religion for belief. And, and that's like, the most interesting part of the movie It's because that's Gary Oldman's character. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing that I was most drawn to is that mm. I wish they fleshed that out more. I wish he actually got a chance to start doing it. It would have been to, to cure the boredom factor of the film is have him get the Bible yeah. and have him start turning people and then make it Eli's mission to get the Bible back. Mm. Like, I think that would have been a way more interesting movie than what we got because we've all, you've all said it. The story of this movie is really interesting and it's a cool take on something like this, mm. but it's boring as fuck. Yeah. Like, it's I think they, it was one of those movies, like it has a, a twist. Mm. Yeah. And I, I it was kind of like they went, Oh, this is a this is a cool twist. How do we build a movie around yeah. Yeah. this? How do we, this be yeah. amazing when we reveal like so? You know, the reveal is that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. like I said, each week it's full spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. All, all of these episodes will be full of spoilers for the films because they're ten years old. Yeah. Yeah. So, like okay. Denzel Washington being blind, yeah. and I remember because I saw this movie in the cinemas yeah, ten years same. ago, and I remember that reveal. Like the cinema was just like. Yeah. Like, yes. and you're kind of like, okay, it's like it's a cool reveal, but never in the movie do you genuinely believe no, that Denzel no. Washington is blind. And I think that's also uh, why they sort of played into it being this massive twist. But yeah. you go, yeah, but and then when you rewatch it, knowing he's blind, there's not once does he ever act. There's tiny little things they throw in there, and I remember going back, and I think I read about it online, but there's like the tiniest, the whole like crux of it no you would not believe it but he's like little things where he's like kicking the steps of the stairs to see where they are and there's like certain bits where he touches certain things and doesn't look but he's having conversations with people where say i'm facing this way and then peter's talking to me and he actually just makes perfect eye okay, line with yeah. you and it's like but you're you're blind yeah and he goes into new surroundings yeah. and there's never any Uncertainty, Momentary, yeah. like, oh, yeah. I haven't been here before. Mm. Yes. You know, and then when it zooms in on his eyes at the end, I was like, I don't think his eyes have been that... No. They, they haven't... They've been clear the whole movie and yeah. they've just decided to do this at the very end. 
Well, this was my first time watching it. And at the end, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Like with the character we've been given up until this point, because it would have been an interesting story, Mm. but the setup wasn't actually there. Like when we get to actually see what's in this book and it turns out that it's in Braille, I looked and went, what? Yeah. I thought it was going to be a blank book. Like he had maybe switched the book and gave him the wrong one or something like that. But like, just, it was just, it should have been a moment where I was like, oh, that's so cool. But instead I was like, yeah. what? Yeah. Uh, I, it, it's just so frustrating that the cons, and I think we're going to see this a lot, especially in 2010. There are so many movies that I remember have such cool concepts that just were executed by writers and directors who just hadn't honed a craft yet. Mm. Like I, what else have the Hughes brothers? So well, this done? is they haven't done anything since this. Yeah, um, okay. Before, Hell. Yeah, so yeah. from yeah. Hell was their other film yeah. that they'd done before this. It is kind of weird that you're like in ten years you haven't done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and this movie was it wasn't like a flop. No, it, it, no, it did. Like right. uh, so right. overall, it grossed 157 um, on a budget of 80. Okay, so like I, mean, it, I suppose it's, US dollars, it didn't. Back yeah, for overall, you but know, it's like it's not enough for, to kill no. a career. Oh you know, God, you know, no! Denzel Washington, Gary Oldman, Mila Kunis have all gone on and been fine. Done great things, yeah. Gary Oldman, it's, it's, it's quite funny watching Gary Oldman throughout his career because, like, we always think of him as being this great actor, but it's like, but he does a lot of oh yeah, of yeah, interesting bad roles. stuff. Yeah, and, like, I mean, he, and when he hams it up, he goes oh, yeah. full hand. Yeah. I mean, look at, you know, in 2013, we've got Paranoia, I think it was. Oh, that, oh yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Right. Harrison Which was Ford amazing movie. cast and just... Awful oh, movie. Yeah. Awful movie. Awful movie. Um, but, uh, Gary Oldman's, the, uh, for me, the best part of the movie. And that's what I think I would love to have just seen his character explored a bit more and be able to do a few more things rather than just be the guy who has a slave woman who is in charge of this town, who is ju- who just yells at, at mercenaries to do shit for him, yeah. which we've seen a million times. Give him a little bit more levity to do things. And talking about mercenaries going and doing shit, the action is so hit or miss in this movie. There are some cool action elements. There's the bar fight scene, which I think is pretty cool, but then we don't see half of it. Mm. Like it starts off strong, then we don't see the rest. And there was a scene where he's in the dark and chopping people the, up. Yeah, the, it's yeah. cool. It's, it's stylized, which yeah. is I think a thing we're going to say this a lot in 2010. A, it's very much a style over substance movie. Yeah, yes. and that's and that's yeah. one positive I really had coming out is I really like the way they frame action in this film of mm. not yeah. of of not quick cuts. Just yeah. actually, they sat the, the you know they they sat the camera down. And that first scene where he's just chopping down the cannibals at the start mm. is brilliant it's because cool. you can see cool. everything. Yeah. You can un- you get an understanding of just how you know good he is at what at you know killing people, yeah. and but you know you understand that like it's you get inside of his mindset and it's not you don't feel like oh you're cutting around the fact that Liam Neeson can't jump over a fence like <laughs> you know what i mean like it's it's Wait, you are you know, Liam Neeson can't jump over a fence <laughs> yeah. taking you light town but what? yeah it, it's that sort of they've actually got some you know courage to actually get denzel mm. to do something yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, uh, that one of the few things i'll praise about this film um it's also <laughs> it is uh written by gary whittaker who went on oh. to do after earth yeah and wrote the story for rogue one that's his other credits this year, after, this decade. Oh, after Earth. The M. Night Shyamalan film. Mm, why? <laughs> yeah. uh, but... Look. Gary's super cool, though. Shout out to Gary. Yeah. Like, I awesome actually... Concept. I Yeah. He... Eh, I think he's had a rough time, of, <laughs> like, outside of things yeah. he's been able to control. But mm, that's, that's a whole different conversation. Yeah. Um, look, I, I think... The cast do a, a, definite, a decent enough job in this. Um, Mila Kunis, she never... Uh, so, she doesn't feel out of place, but there are points where you're like, okay, you kind of feel a little bit your Mila Kunis in a post-apocalypse. Yeah, era. I think that's yeah. it. I think because at that point, you know, like we, it was that 70s show and Family Guy, mm. and she'd done The Getting Sarah Marshall, which was, you know, like her big break yeah. yeah and then in the same year we got black swan which definitely proves yeah, what yeah. she's capable of but i think obviously since then predominantly comedies mm. and it is okay so if you sort of watch her and you go i feel like you're almost gonna make a joke or something yeah like there was yeah. just i mm. think maybe because 
her voice as Meg is so recognisable. Yeah. And yeah. you're always just yeah. used to them going, shut up, Meg. And in a, mo- in a movie <laughs> so where two guys are talking to each other like this, the whole yeah, thing is like, I'll oh, find you. And I'm going like to like kill everyone. You know? It, it, it sort of adds, yeah, yeah. A, a, a different And it's not, yeah, and it's not, it's not, she's, she's not bad. No. I just, just, I don't think she, it, I don't think the chemistry was right between her and Denzel God. to be in this mm. movie together. Like it, it just, no. yeah. Yeah. You never believe that he's yeah. invested to yeah. care enough about her mm. at all. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's just, I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. One other thing, I, uh, something else that I th- you and I talked about that I did like is when the, the, the film kind of, uh, this is again with a problem with the execution is that the film brings up that the, the Bible will fix everything. And then I kind of like that when they actually get to Al- Alcatraz, it's kind of just considered art. Like yeah. they, they a go, piece of no, history. yeah, like it's yeah. oh no, like I liked that t- for them the way that we're gonna fix the world is through art. Is yeah. get it, like oh preservation, if, yeah. And yeah. I, I yeah. liked that idea, and, and that's what I said. It, it's a film it's, filled with great ideas that they just don't execute on. Like you almost wonder had the first draft of this story or the script been something much deeper mm, yeah. and that they kind of went kind of mm. just want to make more of an action just, movie yeah. and it just got lost yeah yeah i mean it's i think the thing that bothered me maybe the most was they set the movie up as him believing that this book is going to save the world like he says i have the book that's going to save the world and then the movie isn't that like the yeah. movie's not actually about yeah what like, like, yeah, he's on this journey that no one's going to stop him from completing. But beyond that, you don't really get yeah. a sense of why this is so important. It kind of just gets pushed to the back of... To make room like, for another action scene. Right. To where, where it's a blind man shooting people in, in the head who are 100 metres away and on the road. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's it's not that it's not cool to watch, because I'll admit, like, especially when I was 15, when this came out, yeah. I was like, fuck, dude, this movie's sick. It's got mad twists, got cool action. And, and I was dumb. I'm still dumb, but that's okay. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, that's what I mean. Like, the, the logic in this film is very sort of hard to grasp onto because... The, it's a reveal that you, like Taylor said, you go, what the fuck to an extent because he's done so much in this film and then they, you go back and watch it and they're like, oh, I guess he does things that sometimes blind people do. Then, so they try know, to cover their tracks. All of the action sequences, they're trying to kill him and he gets away and then they like capture him and they're like, yeah. where's the book? And you're like, you were just trying to kill him. So if you <laughs> shot him or killed him, you yeah. wouldn't know where the book is anyway. So it's weird that... Did like obviously, again, we've just got to set up a really cool action sequence at Denzel Washington. Speaking can of them trying to kill him, is there the assumption in this film that God is protecting him because he gets shot at a few times <sighs> where they miss? Like that guy who's basically like ten meters away from him and shoots at him and misses like three times. And I was under the assumption, I was like, okay, so is there like some sort of supernatural aspect like God is protecting? But then he gets shot shot later. Yeah. In the f- I don't know. I don't want to dig mean, too deep into it. I well, don't think it deserves it. But. That's kind of a problem I had too where I don't know what you're actually supposed to be buying into in this movie. I mm. don't know if you're supposed to be buying into his faith is what gets him through this journey and that's kind of the message of the story. I don't know if you're supposed to believe that like that it's more about a movie of corruption in religion. Like, I just don't think it sucked the landing of what it wanted me to get out of it because yeah. it does end with it being more of a preservationist kind of mm, yeah. goal, I guess. And so I don't really, like, I don't know if I was supposed to watch it from a faith-based standpoint or yeah. not. Like, I I it's just don't know. <laughs> like, very conflicting movie, yeah. It, yeah, like, I think kind of how we've been saying it, it's, one of those films that just the the ideas are there and you yeah. can see the ideas that what they wanted to do and they just didn't execute on it and it's yeah. it's a little disappointing just because there is a lot in there that could have been made this a really interesting and original film and it just doesn't stick the landing yeah unfortunately mm. yeah well, let's move on to our last <laughs> film, uh, the Australian. Uh, I'm gonna call it a classic. You can call it a classic. Yeah, yeah call it a you classic. Can call it whatever you want. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about Brand New Day. Brand New Day is an Australian coming of age musical which follows Willie, a young film, a young Aboriginal teenager who is in love with Rosie, played by Jessica Malboy in her feature film debut. 
When Willie escapes the Catholic boarding school he attends in Perth to return back to his hometown of Broome, he meets a wacky group of characters, all while being pursued by Father Benedictus, played by Jeffrey Rush. Oof. Uh, Taylor, what did you think about this movie? So we got about 10 minutes into this movie and I went, this is absolutely 100% the Australian version of Footloose and I will take no comments (laughs) on the matter (laughs) saying that I'm incorrect. (laughs) And, you know, this movie was just... I don't know if this is going to offend anybody, (laughs) but I don't really care. This is one of the most Australian movies I think oh, I've yeah. ever seen. Oh, God, it's, yeah. It's very, like, in its execution, in the tone it tries to go for, like, I haven't lived here very long, but I know <laughs> that there's just a difference. Like, you just watch an Australian <laughs> film and there's just a difference. It's upside down. Like, it's, it's, upside down, it's it? just, there's just things about it that you're like, you could not get away with that in America. No <laughs> Well, no I mess- way. when I was watching it, I messaged you guys and I'm like, I just saw a shot of Jeffrey Rush taking a <laughs> shit on the side of the road. Like, what What purpose is that? That's what's happening to Jeffrey Rush right now. Yeah, <laughs> hey, look, I was going to say, when after you read out the synopsis for the movie, I'm like, the happiest part of the movie is that the boy got to escape the Catholic Church <laughs> uh, boarding school. But then the, the real terror is that he's getting pursued by Jeffrey Rush. <laughs> so, I mean, the movie doesn't really hold up, does it, 10 oh, years later? Oh, we'll, <laughs> we'll get to that scene later. <laughs> Oh, my God. Um, Don't sue me for defamation <laughs> as well. Fuck. But. <laughs> no, look, in all seriousness, um, I feel I, there's a lot about this film I liked. Uh, I thought the music was good. I, I actually thought, like, I, I enjoyed a lot of the music. Um, don't get me wrong. <laughs> there's, there's one song. There's one song when Ernie Dingo sing, sings later in the movie. I went, oh, boy, Ernie Dingo so, can't that's sing. Weird, that's oh, that's for, those, <laughs> for those who actually don't know, fun fact, we used to have a reality show called It Takes Two where <laughs> a, <did> a, <laughs> a celebrity would team up with a professional singer and they would do a duet. It was, like a, it was kind of like an Australian or American Idol or whatever. And Ernie Dingo was one of the contestants on that and he had a famous episode where he was supposed to sing uh, in the jungle and he came out and his his voice broke on the first line and it was famous for he had to restart and sing the <laughs> song again. So then when I realised he was singing Brand New Day, my mind immediately went back to that and I'm like, he shouldn't be singing in this movie. <laughs> but, and I like also, Ernie Dingo and that's as a person. But he shouldn't be singing and he's... Auto tuned. Oh, oh, yeah. No, it, and it's yeah. still like. It, it's funny that he has that little bit at the start where he's not. And you go, yeah. oh, he's not <laughs> auto tuned. Oh, this is bad. And then he gets auto tuned. And then it's like, oh, okay. I you kind of fixed it. It's still bad, but you kind of fixed it. <laughs> it has to, like, they talk about, like, condoms and stuff. Yeah. It's really just like. Oh, like, it's it's, a, it's, I think, again, yeah, like, you go 2010. This probably wasn't going to be an issue. You watch it now and you go, this is. Problematic. I mean, oh. guys, all of the boys know where the condom tree is, okay? Oh, all of the boys in the oh, land I know where the condom tree is. I literally turned and I said... I don't know where the condom tree is. <laughs> <laughs> I turned uh, when, um, when that scene was happening and then the, the bus turns up or the, the, the car turns up. I went, how the fuck did they know to go there? And then oh, Dingo mate. comes out and goes... All the, boys know, all, all the boys eventually end up to the condom tree and I went... Okay. <laughs> and that's okay. And no, like ex- no excuse for unwanted pregnancy now. You don't know the, the condom so tree is. Like Jeff, uh, Annie Dingo, like giving him shit about being a virgin, and you're like, he's like 14 yeah, years he's, old. He's like, not this a doesn't help. Like this doesn't help that the stereotypical view okay. of. Aboriginal people. That was like a, a big know, problem I had like, with this film. We don't want to think that way, but when you write them in this manner, yeah, it's sort of like you're then perpetuating the myth that you're trying to. Yeah, stop. and I, that was my biggest problem I had initially watching it was I I felt uncomfortable seeing some of the things that were happening happening with the Aboriginal characters in the film. I actually don't know if a- a- Aboriginal people wrote this. I don't know if white people wrote this. Uh, so Rachel Perkins was the director and she is right. Aboriginal. Okay. Right, okay. So, and just to what Peter's saying, and I, I've, as a white Australian, my opinion on Aboriginal culture is obviously not as important as an Aboriginal itself. But from what I've been taught in schools and from what I've been taught talking with ab- Aboriginal friends of mine, that... You're right. It's 100% perpetuating stereotypes that 
we have been trying so long to get rid of. We had our Prime Minister very famously do a, a sorry speech apologising for what we have done, colonial, colonial fucking words, when we came and invaded. And you know what I mean? Like to have a, watching a movie like this where it does perpetuate the stereotypes made me really fucking uncomfortable because I'm like, I'm not supposed to be laughing at this because this is exactly what I've been told is an issue in these communities that we need to try and fix and that we, as Australians, we have been told is our, our uh, uh, I don't know what the word is, but it's like our purpose to help fix that because we have become, we have come into this land. So, But that's also <sighs> like you're watching it as someone in 2020. Yeah, and that so is and you're watching very it back true. And you go, you know, because from what I understand, it's this movie true. did... It did pretty well. It did pretty well. Yeah. It, and, you know, the, like, as you said, like the soundtrack's a lot of fun and it sort of had a lot of attention surrounding it because it was Jessica Mowboy's yes, um, first film, film. film yeah. debut and, like, it had Jeffrey Rush and at that point he was sort of had gone to America and, you know, yeah. had this... Yeah, he was, like, one of well, the I mean, biggest well, this exports. Is, this, huge actor. this is the same year that he gets nominated for King's Speech. So, yeah. like, yeah, he's, he's, right. and at this point, he's won an Oscar. Like, it, yeah. Yeah. He's, it's pretty big. Jessica Mowboy is not great in the Like, because <laughs> Jessica Mowboy, like, in The Sapphires, she was great. Yes. And she's yeah, gone on to, um, was that the Secret Daughter TV yeah, show? Like, she's actually right. a capable She can performer. do a bit in this one. And though. I think in this, the issue that I had was the the audio sounded like sounded they had dumb. dubbed it over again. It like, dumb. they didn't get clear audio and they were like, hey, we're just going to go and do it again. And I think because she's so used to singing live, her lip syncing was exaggerated. And obviously musicals, that's yeah. allowed to be the case. But yeah. I think that sort of just made me go, this feels like you're cheapening yeah. th- yourself because you're capable of... Very cho- yeah. like, And it's very ch- like choppy editing in that first like bit as well. Like when she leaves, when she gets the chance to go into the pub and see what that life is like for the first time, that scene felt very like awkwardly cut to me. And because she goes immediately from, oh, we can hang out. And like, you know, I really like this guy and this guy walks out and he's like, oh, you should come in and, and sing. She's like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that now. Then. And the like, main, better offers and, come up. Um, the main boy, I've forgotten his name. Willie. Willie. Mm. When he sings the, um, there's nothing I'd rather be than ab- an Aborigine yeah. in the church. That song starts like immediately, yeah. like there's no build up and it was sort of like this awkward editing mm. that kind of just um, made, yeah, I just So felt, uh, this film is based off, a stage show, yeah. So yes. that, c- that could a lot case. of it could come from the adaptation side of it. Yeah. yeah. Um. I do find so one of the uh. There is one bit of trivia on the IMDb page. <laughs> um. It's that uh. Robin Williams wanted to play the priest. Wow. You know yeah. what? I could see that. I could see that. I Rob, see like that. Robin Williams did love. He loved a good, campy. Yeah, movie. he loved. Yeah, yeah musical. And it's yeah. weird that like that movie got enough. No, like got noticed somehow. Yeah. That he yeah. To be in. Well, he, he the director want uh, Rachel wanted Jeffrey Rush, and that was it. So okay. it was, okay. yeah. Um, do we want to just talk about the uh, problematic scene at the moment <laughs> uh, when it rhyme with Wolf Maris? <laughs> <laughs> I that was seriously when he came out. He just goes. Oh, I stole a Rolf Harris CD, uh, tape and I just... I, I laughed. Yeah, I I was, you were sitting there going, I have no idea. Yeah. And you're going to have to explain this to the audience because no one's yeah, going to no know one's what the hell you're talking yeah. about. Uh, like, you yeah. know what, Nick? I'm going to let you explain. Hey, look, I've already <laughs> talked about the serious <laughs> shit. Why not go again? So Rolf Harris was an entertainer. He's an Australian entertainer who for many years, I believe probably from the 70s, most likely based on his age, uh, he was a singer, he's a songwriter, and he's very famous. The most famous song he's ever done was uh, Timey Kangaroo Down, Sports of the Timey Kang- Time Kangaroo Down, which is a very famous Australian song. Recently, he uh, has been accused of and charged with severe uh, rape allegations, child molestation allegations throughout his whole career. And it's similar to like the Jimmy Savile in the UK. He was basically our Jimmy Savile. So when, you know, Jimmy Savile died and everyone found out he was a pedophile. It was shocking. Rob Harris is still alive and he's now in prison for what he's done. So the fact that it's come up in a movie, and that's crazy how 10 years ago yeah. that joke still works because it's like, oh, Rob Harris is still a huge part of Australian icon. Uh, he's just a huge Australian icon. So, yeah, it's the same deal. It's like you're saying, watching this movie in 2020, it's unfortunate that a lot of the and things it's also haven't aged well. because it's... Jeffrey, Jeffrey Rush, Rush yeah, who is now who quite he's gone through in the, the yeah, it's all still alleged with him, yeah. unfortunately. We'll see. Quiet, 
It's yeah. quietened down because they haven't proven anything yet as much, but the you know what I mean. The it's, comparison that I used for Rolf Harris so that you would understand yeah. is he was essentially our Fred Rogers. For a lot of people, for a yeah. lot of people, yeah. our like for my parents' age and our age was he was Fred Rogers for Australia because yes. we um, so just in case you have noted, Australia never got Fred Rogers, so they it, didn't uh, get Mister Rogers. Yeah, so Mister Rogers never came to Australia. That's why a beautiful day. A lot of people it's, it's, have no idea, yeah, and yeah. why the trailers for a beautiful day where they kind of go, there's something off about him works here because we think it could be a better. Yeah, <laughs> and everyone in America is like, how dare you? Yeah. How and fucking then, dare you? And then our counter is, we've got Roll Paris. We, we don't. We've suspect. never had one of the good ones. Damn yeah. it, we don't know any better. We don't. So, like yeah. Jeffrey Rush was accused. Roll Paris. Was, like, yeah. Craig McLaughlin. Yeah, yeah, that's it's crazy. <laughs> so, look, the fact that America has one of the good ones for once. <laughs> yeah, All right. No, yeah, you can take. This like, yeah. let us have I've one. Seen Trump's let us <laughs> let us have one. All right. Especially so, yeah. when it comes to the children. Okay. Yeah. So that <laughs> like, oh. it doesn't it doesn't age well, unfortunately. So yeah. along so along with the Rolf Harris comments, the Jeffrey Rush playing a Catholic priest. Who's chasing down a boy who escapes a Catholic school? I and uh, here's your plot right now. <laughs> and, and, and for Our 2020 I realized, rewrite of that movie. But I realized, I didn't really give an example before of perpetuating stereotypes. There's actually a scene where it is played off comically that an Aboriginal man is stealing food yeah. and, and alcohol as well. Like, and and alcoholism is actually a, is a big and very important issue in Aboriginal communities. Uh, with with the abuse of it so to have a scene where which obviously culturally it makes sense that to have a character who does that but to have it played for comedy is not what i would personally do is the way to go for it and which it, it just struggle i struggled to watch it for a lot of those reasons it's, too it's interesting that you guys have that kind of perspective on that scene because i don't have a lot of understanding mm. of that culture yeah. just because it's not yeah. it's just not no, something i fine, have yeah. experience with um for me, the way that I viewed that was more of someone um, who doesn't have anything, more of someone who's homeless yeah. doing it for yeah. laughs, which, which isn't much better. It's probably played for but that like, as well, to be honest. And I might be looking way too deep into it as part of it, but you're 100% right. Like it could be played for that sort of humor, which doesn't make which, it right. But yeah, but no, it's not any better. I just think it's interesting because I don't really have a a good lens yeah. of how to view that kind of culture when yeah. it comes to this kind of it's stuff. Right. Neither do so, do so <laughs> fair, like, to be a hundred percent fair, like a white <laughs> Australia doesn't either. So, but yeah. I, I don't know. It's, it's really, really interesting though. 10 years on to, to look at it and try to examine yeah. it. But the, w- there is something I want to talk about just before we wrap up this movie. And this scene just keeps getting better and better or worse and worse, depending <laughs> on your perspective. But the very pretty much climax of the movie where everyone finds out they're all related to each other. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's one old big family we, reunion. We where do it a little differently down under, I'll tell you that. You're like, can we just confirm we don't do it differently? <laughs> Sarcasm. I just want to say that the super super white German kid. <laughs> oh my god! I haven't even spoken about that. Like, oh, that, that, that's a whole German other one that we just completely And Missy well. Missy Higgins. Missy Higgins has the line of the movie where she goes, "Oh, I'm Aboriginal." Too. And everyone and everyone's just like. Oh, for fuck's sake, all right. Sure, you can be Aboriginal, why not? Okay, but the monologue leading up to her declaring that, where she's like, I was in a sea of black faces, and I just remember being pulled, and I was like, what? It's like, yeah. Like, it sounds a bit... Yeah, it's a I, I want to say what I was going to say, but I was like, that's not where you want to be, like, saying you're a white woman mm. in a sea of black faces. Like, but but I'm just, I'm just going to say that uh, the German kid clearly did not get any of his mother's genes <laughs> because <laughs> because I love that that scene is he's the crux of that scene though why like he's he's a ma- minor major character you know what I mean but then like he is the revelation yeah. point of where everyone's like oh we're all we're like you <laughs> like if this the- guy can be an Aboriginal <laughs> then everyone, everyone can and it's the white German boy <laughs> god damn I like I I know you guys enjoyed this movie 
But my first note here is Jesus Christ <laughs> and three dots. Because, again, and I'm going to use the same excuse I used with Leap Year. I watched this with my partner and she just got up 15 minutes in. She's like, I've got to take the Christmas tree down. And I was like, okay, all right. I guess that's what we're doing when we're brand new day. I've watched all of these movies like by myself. <laughs> I'm, so sorry. I'm like, I can't, I can't subject. Because I, if I like it, I'll be like, I'll happily watch this again. And my partner can come and watch yeah. it with me. But right now I'm like, I need to do this by myself. <laughs> because value, I, can't, yeah. I can't be like held responsible. I'm just creating like, This tension. movie's terrible. I didn't make it. <laughs> I'm only watching this because it's research. It's Sort of. I just, oh. I just want to say I'm gonna use the same thing I used for Leap Year and say <laughs> this movie's not good. <laughs> but yeah, it gave you everything you want. But like, I don't know about that, but it definitely it gave me like I was at least like interested in what was going on. Like even if it wasn't good, I was like. I mean, I think I put it in the group chat while we were watching it. I was like, this is Footloose, but it's also like doing acid. And I'm yeah. not really sure. It's so frantic like, it's and like, fast paced. Like uh, it's an 80 minute movie and it flies oh, it goes by. by. Yeah. It feels yeah. like an episode and of a And they're just show. like, so, yeah. they're throwing music at you. Yeah. And they're throwing like weird, like almost love scenes at you. And they're yeah, throwing like <laughs> interesting drugs at you. Being like weirdly predatory. Yeah. And it's like that doesn't... <laughs> There's, yeah. And Magda yeah. Shabansky kind of being all awesome. Oh she my god, Magda's in this. When she Magda turned up, I, I was just like, like, oh my god. And it's also another thing because you're watching that in 2010 when I don't think her sexuality was. No, she uh, hadn't come out. She hadn't, yeah. no, no, no. So watching this. Yeah. And she's like hitting on the very aggressively coming on to Ernie Dingo and all like, you know, like Oh, out of nowhere like, too. Yeah. There's no it's it's like, the joke is played that she's just attracted to mm-hmm. Aboriginal people, like, yeah. but they don't even uh, allude to that. So no. and it's like he just stole from your shop, but okay. Why not? It must be you know, hey, it's a lonely part of town. As soon as Dick walks in the door, you just gotta be like, oh, Get well, that D. This could Get be it. You know what? Yep. Uh, <laughs> yep. It's the only logical conclusion. Uh, yeah, I'll give that point. Yep. <laughs> I think we might just end that movie there. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, it's a, a uh, soft recommendation from uh, us. I mean, <laughs> I think you need to experience this one for yourself before forming I would any be sort intoxicated. Of, yeah, I would, I would have that. a couple yeah. drinks. And maybe. maybe watch it in a 2010 state. Of yeah. <laughs> yeah. So turn off that. Yeah. 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 All right, box office results for this weekend was <laughs> number one, still Avatar with $42.7 million on its fifth week of release. Uh, I think that movie's going to make that some money. I have does, a funny that idea. It doesn't happen now. No, 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 it really doesn't. Um, number two, Book of Eli with $32.78 million on its first week of release. Uh, interesting fact, Denzel Washington, outside of his films that he's directed, has, and outside of his films that he directed and Roman Esquire, that one that came out a couple of years oh, ago, yeah. every f- film of his has opened to over $20 million. Wow. At the US did, box office. Did Out of Time open? Oh, actually, I think that I was, think was, out of time was, that was like the, one, that was the of, one that didn't, no, sorry, I think you're right, yes. That was the, the Dean Cain part of yes. the movie. Somehow <laughs> Dean Cain and Denzel Washington <laughs> in the movie. Yeah. Dean Cain. Yeah. Uh, number three, Lovely Bones opened to $17 million on its technically sixth week of release. Uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks, the squeakle, uh, had $11.6 million on its fourth week of release. Sherlock Holmes with 9.8 on its fourth weeks. The Spy Next Door opened to $9 million on its first week. Take that it's, compl- <laughs> it's complicated at its $8 million on its fourth week. Leap Year dropped to 5.9 on its second on its uh, second week. Yikes. The Blind Side uh, had 5.5 on its ninth week of release and Up in the Air was the number 10 film with 5.45, <laughs> meaning Daybreakers dropped out of the, yeah, top, the 10 top 10 from the, from fourth. Youth in Revolt dropped from ninth. Yep. And Princess and the Frog dropped from 10th. Daybreakers yeah. dropping from four is That's crazy like, actually. Yeah, cuz yeah. I know that they're you know it's standard that movies drop off. Yeah. But like to go from four to but like minimum yeah. eleven. But like and know? it's not like but the thing is it's not like number ten was a huge grossing. Like no. it, like number uh, you know it had it, Daybreakers made fifteen million last week, and it doesn't even make more than five million dollars. Yeah, that's, that's that's rough. Yeah, that's not great. Uh, all right, let's move on to the major news stories. 
So, Marvel announced that their first their first film to ever be released in IMAX is Iron Man 2 in about 4 months. So, that's that's quite interesting considering pretty much from then onwards, yeah. IMAX have had a deal with Disney. Everything gets released in IMAX, which yeah. is pretty incredible. And Iron Man 2 is it's always the one that a lot of people just don't really have yeah. the last opinion on. Nah, no. yeah. we'll get there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we watched that this year. I forgot I was talking to Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> Brian Cranston officially joins the cast of John Carter of Mars. Oh, yes. Before he eventually we... will leave this film. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll also drop from Mars. Yep. So, yeah. Doesn't he end up... Does he voice someone in that? He might not? voice... Oh. No, he did. He was a voice in Power Rangers, and that was big I news. I don't think he actually is in that oh, film in the end. For some, some reason, out. I felt like he still was in it. But, yeah, I just remember John Carter of Mars being just massively hyped and like yeah. you know and it just yeah mm, it, it did not perform poor like taylor Kitsch, at all like oh man didn't have a, didn't stand a chance with his openings john uh, carter in the guy. battleship oh that's yeah. right oh yeah <laughs> um <laughs> and our last one we talked about it a little bit last week but sony officially scraps spider-man oh, a week four. a week later a week later <laughs> a week later spider-man 4 is officially scrapped uh, yeah exactly. and the reboot is announced for july 2020 like, Mar- and mark webb is already heavily rumored 2020 to sorry 2012 oh well, i was sorry. like wow they uh, they push that 10 years. Yeah, um, they push it and then they're like, yeah, actually, we'll release it in 2012. Like it's crazy yeah. that <laughs> we'll within a week they go, we're, gonna, we're possibly going to have Spider-Man 4 and Hathaway, John Malkovich. Mm-hmm. Nah, we're all gone. We're going to get a brand like yeah. brand new one. Yeah. And at that point, I'm guessing Andrew Garfield no, and yeah. Stone hadn't even been a... No, so yeah. they weren't even announced. I mean, Mark Webb was, bare, was, was, he, was heavily rumoured, yeah. but wasn't officially on board. That's or an interesting choice, hey, to go that early on to be like have him as the heavy rumor because had he only done 500 days or something 500 days had just come out yeah um, okay, he, so he was hot he hot, was hot yeah, 500, 500 days came out in september and at this point 500 days was still one of those bubble films of possibly getting an oscar nomination right okay so it's, so they wanted to try and tap it, in. yeah, yeah and enough. it's one of those ones where they were like oh maybe we can get him early i mean you also got to remember that he, they had to come to, to fox with a deal like they had to make a deal with fox over getting mark because mm. they um he had a contract with fox over a, a three film contract and he w- and they had to actually make a deal and that's why mm. if you remember spider-man 2 had the post credit scene for x-men oh, i don't know if you guys can remember yes, that they, yeah. they had like the scene for in days the, of future Past, yeah they yeah. had the scene in the hangar or whatever yeah that's there because of that deal oh, right wow. yeah i know okay. I, no, I vaguely remember them talking about mm. that because it was very interesting to see yeah because yeah. that was the one where it was mystique in the hangar, yeah, yeah it's yeah the scene in where mystique gets the troops out of vietnam yeah. and yeah like it's it's just quite remember. fascinating that the weird stuff studios <laughs> do um but yeah, yeah that's uh, is anything there step stand out outside of the spider-man news uh, i mean not not particularly i don't think um, I think the, so the Spider-Man news kind of really overtook this yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and rightfully so. Yeah. That's a huge deal. Oh, I know. I mean, I, like, can, I remember that. I still r- vividly remember that where it was mm. Tobey Maguire gone, Sam Raimi gone, Spider-Man 4. Like, it's brand new Spider-Man. And, and even then they were announcing we're redoing the, the origin. Like he's going to mm. be back in high school and the yeah. origin story is going to be told again. And just, I just even Ooh. then remember the people Ooh. were just like, why? Which... Looking back on it now that we have Tom Holland, the fact that you wanted me to believe Andrew Garfield was in high school, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah maybe yeah. like maybe just bump it up to first year of college, maybe, yeah. right? You know, because at like, least and, then, and then it's the like, stone, you go, you like, you do not look like a high school. Like <laughs> no. in that, in that, I remember in that movie when she came in, our part of me was just like, oh, she's like working at that. Fact, uh, the yeah. S- yeah. science lab or she's yeah. like a she's an or intern or she's she, like a, I was yeah. like oh you're seven, 17 <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah and you know especially considering this year Andrew Garfield plays a college student and in two years he's meant to play a high school <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, yeah that's right so working, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, quite interesting yeah. that uh, all right I uh, guess we'll just wrap this one up with the Australian release dates uh, so January 14th Tooth Fairy opened a week before the US release, so we will talk about it next week. Uh, <laughs> and we 
finally, after seven weeks in it being released in the US, got up in the air. I wow. remember that because I wanted to see that movie so yeah, right. badly and we finally actually got it for a release. Yeah. And then, of course, Brand New Day opened in Australia. So, yeah. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, <laughs> thanks for having us. Thanks. Yeah, you're, you're very welcome for putting you through the, uh, the fun films that you get to watch. Wouldn't do it if I didn't love it, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Peter's like I very very highly regret coming on this show <laughs> no because the, the movie that we're going to talk about next week I hadn't seen and and I'm glad I'm I, the only I one who of, said I controversial like shit this episode <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for my career to tank <laughs> because yeah. of it and uh, like next week I'll probably be very much in the positive in certain aspects of certain movies oh yeah <laughs> I've already watched the first hour of Tooth Fairy and I have some nice things to say so uh, you know the only way is up <laughs> all right well guys we'll leave that one there um next week if you do want to uh play along with us at home we are watching tooth fairy legion and extraordinary measures which i've somehow got to try and find a copy of so i think that's another telstra box <laughs> oh great all right guys uh until next time where can the uh people find you online guys uh you can find me on twitter at rated pdg or search me on rotten tomatoes might as well get my name out there yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Nick's Flix Fix. You can find me on Twitter uh, at Finally Tailored or Instagram at underscore Finally Tailored. Um, I mean, you can find links of both of our stuff pretty much anywhere. Yeah, so pretty much. <laughs> they're uh, plastered all over this channel. Yeah. Where can people find you on your own channel? Yeah, I don't um, know. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, you guys can find me at anywhere, basically at Jacob London. Uh, until next time, guys, my name is Jacob London, and we will see you then. Bye.